there's one dish you absolutely can't leave off this list. A dessert that represents the whole United States, and it's been that way for generations. The apple pie. When you take something that's already a cheat day favorite, dip it in batter, and deep fry it, magic happens. Yeah, we're going to make some magic happen this morning. Welcome Eddie Jackson to Great Day Houston. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. All right. Okay. You, like so many people, uh, we grew up kind of right next to Grandma and Ma, just basically cooking in the kitchen. Yeah. You took to it in a different way than a lot of us do. Yeah, my grandmothers were uh, chefs on both sides, so I started cooking when I was like five years old. They yeah. were making biscuits from scratch. And what's crazy about the grandmas, for some reason, is that you can say, what's for dinner? You look at the cabinet, there's like a, a thing of flour and a pinch of salt, and all of a sudden there's a whole Thanksgiving meal. No, I've, and it's I've, like, I've never come seen from? my dad do that. I, I knew for a fact we didn't have anything in the kitchen. And then before you know it, we have a whole spread. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you knew also at a young age that you wanted to do something with food as a living, but football kind of got in the way. <laughs> yeah, I um, I, I was a, a great athlete growing up, all American in college, but I always cooked. So uh, in high school, I used to cook. Then in college, I used to uh, make plates and sell it to my teammates for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I, that's how I kept pocket change. That was that's pretty good. Very industrious of you. All right. So after the football was over, for a lot of guys, it, it, it's tough because you made this transition, right? Uh, How was that transition for you? For me, once I got two things that I, I knew I absolutely loved, that was obviously sports, football, and food. And once I got done playing football, I went to my dad and I was like, look, what should I do? I got a degree in business. He was like, well, you need to do something with food. So I bought a food truck way back when, 10 years ago, and that's how I really got started into food catering. And just kind of blew up from yeah, there. Yeah, it did blow up there. There you ended up going into, obviously, uh, you know, when they started casting for different uh, shows on yeah. the Food Network. What made you decide to go ahead and do that? Uh, I did a show called Master Chef about six years ago, and um, I did really good on the show. So I was like, you know what? I think I, I think I can do you it. You can't eat your own food. Nobody yeah. else should, right? Yeah. So I, I was like, you know what? I think I can really do this. And then I did Food Network star in 2015, and I and I won the show. You know, that kind of catapulted me into my. TV world. Yeah, so you got your TV show, yeah. you're an author, game day eats. What are you going to make for us right now? So today I'm making a few recipes for my book. This is going to be my red ale uh, onion ring. So I use, I like to use like an ale beer, which gives it a nice dark, rich color. Yeah, and right? doesn't beer kind of help things kind of like pop up a little bit and make it crispier? Yeah, it makes it crispy, but also this has some caramel notes in it as well. So it's going to be extra dark. The onion rings are going to be extra crispy and they're going to be delicious. Yes, they're going to be delicious because you're making them. That's why they're going to be delicious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the game they eat. So in the book, um, obviously the things that are fun to eat, cool to eat, something's familiar but with a different twist. Yeah, so basically the premise of the book is taking the whole concept of tailgating and bringing it inside the house, right? So all the things that we love to do, tailgate, hanging out, hanging out with friends. So we're doing that, but we're doing it at home. Home gating is what it's called. It's called home, home gating. gating like a pro. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, and when putting this book together, what was it that you were looking for? So basically what I was doing is making it approachable for everybody. So a lot of times when you get cookbooks these days, you know, you have to order ingredients online. So basically I want to have ingredients that you can one, get at the grocery store, but right. anybody can make it. Anybody of any skill set can make it. Yeah, all right. So when you're doing a book, obviously you take time, you plan out the recipes, you know that they're tested. Uh, Easier said than done doing a cookbook, right? Easier said than done. This was probably one of the hardest things that I've ever done because I have over 100 recipes, but each recipe I had to basically recreate at least... 10 or 15 times. Yeah. So it took me 18 months to and, do it. And then, of course, with the recipe book, is that it's one thing to know how to cook something. Like, my mom used to just throw it down. She'd say, girl, I don't know what the recipe is. I just do it, right? Yeah. But then when you have, like, a cookbook, you have to tell other people exactly how to do it. You have to be very precise, right down to the weight. Weight conversion is something that's very particular because you got to realize what a cookbook, like this cookbook you can get on Amazon, you can get at every Barnes and Nobles. Uh -huh. It's available all around the world. So you have to be able to have weight conversion so people that want to buy it in Europe, yeah. and things like that. So it was very, it's a very difficult task. All right. So you did the book with planning, of course, but when you're on things like Next Food, uh, Next Food Network Star and Master Chef and stuff like that, you don't have a lot of time to plan on those shows. How real is that crunch time? It's very real. So it's not only that you have to cook, but it's also about on-camera personality. Right. So you have to be able to cook and talk to the camera all at the same time. Like you're doing that. right now. Like I'm yeah. doing right now. Yeah. 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 That's very hard. You know, some people can't do that, but it takes a talent, like, as you know. Yeah, and then, of course, in a competition, you could be, like, on top of the world one day, and then the next time, something goes wrong, and you're out. Oh, right? it happened. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, it happened. You know, I was winning and winning week, week in, week out. Then I had a couple of weeks where I literally just got my butt kicked. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. Uh, Rose Hill Beer Garden. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I own a beer garden in Cypress, Texas called uh, Rose Hill Beer Garden. And it's also a food truck park as well. 
So basically what we do is, um, it's three acres of all kinds of food trucks all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and then we specialize in doing like craft beers. So uh, it's fun times for the kids, for the uh, pets. The craft beers is fun time for the kids? Or the no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun time for the kids. It's fun time for the kids because what happens is the parents go out there and they hang out. And then the kids get to play. We have a huge uh, two-story pirate ship playground. Yeah. So the kids play and the parents hang out. And, it's and you know what's also great about that is what food does. Food brings people around the table. It brings people together. Yeah, that's the thing about this book. It's like it's called home getting. So it gives you opportunity to really spend time with your friends and family. Okay, you're hosting a barbecue cook-off this weekend. Yeah, so this weekend, um, the 12th, we have we have two things going on. So I'm doing a cookbook signing. But I'm also doing our second annual uh, barbecue cook-off. Thousand dollar cash prize, but it's all for fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There are so many people who will say, "I would love to cook, but it's intimidating, and I don't think I'm a good cook." Um, what do you say to them? Because when you look at a recipe, they just follow the directions, right? It's easier said than done. Yeah. Now, I know some people that can't follow the recipe to save their lives. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. But I think that's you know the good thing about this book is that. It's approachable for everybody. Everything, you know, it's not overly difficult, and it's things that you know and love. But what I do is I add some, I don't want to use the word exotic, but things yeah. that you don't normally think about um, combining with. So, like things like these sliders, right? So, right. I'm doing a Caribbean take on these sliders. So, I make uh, a jerk rub, right, from scratch, and then we just combine that with these sliders to kind of amp up the flavor a little bit. Yeah. We, you can look at cooking as a chore, and sometimes you're doing it day after day after day so you get something on the table, but it also provides some joy, and, and it sounds like that, that was what you grew up with. Yeah, so, you know, like a lot of people growing up in the South, when my grandmothers or my dad would cook, we had music going, we had friends and family over, and it was an event. Yeah. And people would just hang out in fellowship and just, it, it was happy times. They always knew which house to go to. Exactly. Well, I know which house they go to now. They come to my house. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the whole great day staff will be at your house uh, <laughs> after the show. Y'all are welcome. <laughs> All right. So we got our sliders here. As you mentioned, you put your homemade rub in there. Yep. And there's something to be said for what ingredients you're using. I think for you know many years we dealt with processed stuff, or we just yep. threw in some salt and pepper, and that yep. was it. There's so much more in the world to put in your food. Yeah, so I like to um, use different things that, that add spice or add sweetness, right? So, for instance, I have a few recipes in my book where I use Calabrian chilies, right? Which a lot of people really don't know about, but it's like an Italian chili. But it's very, it's fruity, but it's also has some spice notes to it as well. Yeah, we were talking before the show started about just if you know what food does in food, it gives you, like, an area to just kind of play in, right? Exactly. Creative. Like my Mexican meatloaf. I ran out of breadcrumbs and couldn't find any. I thought, like, okay, what do I do? Yeah. And found an old bag of Fritos, yeah. threw it in there. And uh -huh. I was like, okay, let's put some cheddar cheese in here. And let's put some, like, uh, picante sauce in here. And there we go. This Frito. Brought meatloaf. to you by Frito Lake. That's right. <laughs> there you go, right? There you go. Okay, so let's fry it for a little bit there. Yeah, so we're going to go about three minutes on each side. And what I do, what I pair it with, um, you can use different types of cheese. I like to use an aged cheddar with that because of the smokiness and yeah. depth of flavor. But then we also have a jerk ketchup as well that I make. The jerk ketchup? Jerk ketchup. So it's another way to amp up the flavor. Got some allspice going on there, some cinnamon, some oregano, fresh yeah, oregano spices. Yeah, that. Okay, do you start with, like, regular ketchup and add to it, or do you start with... Yeah, you with start with regular ketchup, and then basically you add some lime juice and fresh herbs and spices. Are you going to like that? Oh, I'm, yeah. yes, I'm going to yeah, like that. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? That is really good. That's good, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's really good. All right, so did you have that in the meat itself, or do you put that on after? No, that's going to be after. So that's okay. just going to be um, going to go on our buns, and then we're just going to pair that with the onion rings. Yeah. All right, so you're going to keep cooking on that. Uh, by cooking. the way, the barbecue cook-off at Rose Hill Beer Garden is Saturday from noon to 6 p.m. There will be lots of food, drink specials, and live music, and a whole lot more. Plus, Eddie will be there signing copies of his book, Game Day Eats, from 2 to 4 p.m. You can find Game Day Eats in bookstores and online. I was just at a tailgating uh, event on Sunday for the Houston Texans, and there was amazing all the food out there, but everyone yeah. always looks for something creative to do. Yeah. So all those tailgaters need to get this book out here. Okay, speaking of food, Tyla Simone Creighton is also with us today. She is a 15-year-old entrepreneur who developed her own sauce. Hi there. Hi. Hello. All right, we're going to talk to you about your whole segment. I can't put this in just a little bit, but... Eddie, what do you have to say to a young entrepreneur like this, 15 years old, who's come up with her own hot sauce? First of all, I am so amazed by this young lady. I've heard about it. It's the first time I actually get to meet her, but it is such a pleasure to meet you. Like someone like you at such a young age, reaching for the stars and like basically going for your dreams. I remember what I was doing. I was 15. I didn't have my own 
Hot sauce. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, she's hot sauce. Hot sauce. What I love is that you, you couldn't find what you wanted, so you said, that's okay, I'll just make it. Yeah. But that's kind of how it all started, right? That's how it all started. My favorite restaurant closed down, so I tried to recreate their sauce, and I ended up coming up with my own. Yeah, and then getting it in the store. Yes. Oh, my and now I'm trying to get in Walmart, HEB, and just take over the industry. Okay, maybe you need to give him advice then. <laughs> <laughs> give me some advice. Give me some advice. That's pretty cool. All right. With the cooler weather, there are some comfort foods we love even more. We're all about food this morning. Like a good bowl of soup. And as y'all know, down south, we like it thick and chunky, don't we? In fact, we like it so nice and chunky that it's not even soup anymore. Instead, we call it gumbo. Great Day's Christina Cooker is having gumbo for breakfast right now. I